Hi, this is a brief overview for how to participate in the Ash Cloud Apocalypse event and uh, that's happening in November 2015. Uh, this is the web app in tab 3 you'll open a map uh, on this web app and you can see it here, Ash Cloud Apocalypse data entry form and you need to go to each factor here um, and enter some data into it, a score from 1 to 5 where 1 is always a low risk factor and 5 a high risk factor. We're looking at the effects of a mega volcano if it erupted, how what effect it would have on the area near you uh, where you live. Uh, and this can be done for anywhere in the world. So you're going to need to keep this tab open and switch between the different tabs. It'll tell you which page to go to. So number four, for example, distance from a mega volcano. You can see here it brings up the mega volcanoes that are around the world. And uh, you can see it's got different buffer distances. If I lived really nearby, I'd be affected by um, ash, pyroclastic flow, lava, and so on, perhaps. And uh, if I live far away, the effects get much less. Maybe some minor ash fall out, and so on, until the effects are relatively irrelevant from the direct impacts of the volcano. So if I'm in this zone in the UK for example, I'm between 1,500 and uh, 3,000 kilometres away, maximum distance 3,000 kilometres away. I look on this score and I can see I'm low risk. I'd go back to this tab and I'd enter the data uh, for low risk which was a score of 2. Can you see that uh, score of 2 here and uh, for that distance and I put the 2 in here. You can only give a value of between 1 and 5. Uh, for it to count into this event. Um, other things to look at, uh, then uh, you need to work through the different tabs. So having done that, you go to the height of land and so on, you would enter data for that. So height of land, the higher land would be uh, colder and if there was a, a cooling effect from a mega volcanic eruption, then the higher land you are, uh, the colder it would become. Uh, you zoom to your home location and you'd click on the map and you can see it brings up your elevation. So if you lived here in a high area, such as the Alps, you'd have a high, um, uh, uh, high uh, elevation above sea level and uh, if you are lower down it would be lower and you take your score from here so if I was let's say uh, between 100 and 200 metres above sea level I'd give myself a score of 3 and enter that into the form here. Um, let's look another one, climate obviously if you were in a colder area it would be worse than if you were in a a warmer area because if climate's dropped it would be a more severe effect. So if I was in this part of the UK for example, 10 degrees, I'd zoom to my local area, uh, find out the climate when you zoom in. Uh, it, uh, in this case it will all be sort of the same colour but if you click on it it will tell you the temperature 10 degrees. I look it up on this scale, a score of 3. Uh, and uh, if I want to see the full picture I can go to the full uh, home page and zoom out uh, the home button here. Um, other factors include uh, population density, so uh, again zoom to my home location here um, and you get a detailed population map and you click on it, uh, your home location, so find your exact uh, street, you can click in your postcode to achieve this, to get a closer zoom in and, um, and read off the data here, it's 314 people in this particular square for a small square of 250 kilometres. I look it up on this scale, that's more than 300 people, I give myself a high risk score, it's quite a crowded area. And uh, Next factor here, level of wealth. Richer areas are going to be able to cope better than poorer areas. So you can see here, you can click on it uh, and get uh, details about the wealth in different areas. Uh, some uh, countries have only got national data for and here in the UK and America, parts of Europe, you can see I've got much more detailed uh, information for it. So zoom into your home location to see what level of detail you've got, again using the postcode uh, finder here, or zip code finder, um, and uh, if it's a red area then it's low wealth, if it's a blue area it's high wealth, and uh, you give yourself the score accordingly, uh, go back to the form and uh, put in the level of wealth score uh, between 1 and 5 there. Um, Next factor, traffic chaos. If uh, there was um, disruption caused by the ash cloud apocalypse, either direct from ash, perhaps lava disruption, or uh, from uh, ice or snow fallout, perhaps from a cooling climate, there might be traffic disruption. So it's a sort of proxy indicator of disruption in your area. Uh, obviously this is live traffic data, but uh, we're assuming when we're sort of playing the game of uh, the fact that it might be uh, an ash cloud event happen. So you're using it in that kind of context to look at the traffic flow as a sense of whether it's been disrupted. So if you click anywhere on the map, uh, find your home address, uh, it will bring up uh, a white dot um, marker on your home location and uh, and uh, you can see that it brings up a grey circle and you look at the traffic in that area and judge it according to which description it fits best here. Is it mostly 
uh, flowing freely or green lines or some yellow and orange lines you can see here traffic score of two probably for the location we've got here or has it actually got traffic incidents you can see uh, these dots or circles representing traffic incidents uh, where there are actual dots you can see here quite a big one and a small one here if they were within my circle then I would give it a higher score suggesting there are traffic incidents not just slow flow nearby uh, perhaps caused by the ash cloud event uh, Asthma score uh, uh, for risk factor 7 on the table. I read this information, judge uh, my uh, level of uh, breathing difficulties, uh, uh, suffering with asthma, uh, regularly or infrequently or not at all, uh, because the ash cloud, ash event could affect it. Uh, and finally, uh, community spirit here as well, risk factor 8. Uh, I read these descriptions and give it a score 1 or 5 uh, for very good or very poor community spirit, for helping out uh, your neighbours, as it were, during a... a uh, emergency event like this ash cloud apocalypse if you need help locally. And a very final layer here is risk factor 9. You'd go to your table, keep entering the data one by one on these maps, risk factor 9 uh, in uh, map uh, 12 here. Uh, tab 12, risk factor 9, emergency supply hubs. These show you where there are emergency centres that will provide assistance for you. So if you lived in this area, let's say in Gloucester, uh, you put in your postcode, of course, for each of these. Uh, it'll tell you where your nearest emergency supply hubs are. Uh, this one is nine kilometres away, for example, if I lived here in Gloucester. Um, you put in your, obviously, exact details, postcode. Uh, but uh, if this was my correct information, then it would be quite a long way to my nearest emergency hub. Uh, but if, let's say, I only lived uh, in this area, uh, quite near that particular hub, I'd only be one kilometre away. Uh, and I read this information to judge what score I give it, depending on how far I might, under worst case scenario, have to actually walk to get emergency help and supplies and uh, in difficult conditions. So uh, I give it the final score. All those scores, as said, go uh, one by one into this, uh, into this form. Uh, the final thing to do is just to search for your home location um, on these maps. Uh, for your data entry form, so you actually put a dot on the map uh, near your home, you don't have to put it exactly on your home, let's say your home location was here, uh, uh, having put in your postal zip code then uh, you can move it slightly into the uh, street or area nearby because obviously the data represents sort of your local area, not exactly your home, uh, so you can offset it if you wish slightly and then finally submit entry at the bottom here, very important to do that and then all the data that you've entered will go into the final map and you can see the data on these final maps, you might have to refresh it to see the final version, uh, the most recent version but uh, all the data that's been put in up to this point uh, will be on this map, you can see all the scores here and the circles for the map here being the biggest circles for the highest overall risk score. Uh, I should have said, sorry, on this uh, data entry form there is an opportunity for you in number 10 to calculate your overall risk which means just adding up all your individual risk score numbers uh, between 1 and 5 for all these factors. The maximum would be a 5 on each of these for 9 different factors which would be a score of 45 uh, but uh, your score would be typically less, obviously less than that depending on where you live and how uh, dangerous the area is should a mega volcano erupt. So that's the uh, overview of how to enter data into this form for the Ash Cloud Apocalypse event. Um, and uh, hopefully it uh, makes sense and hopefully you'll have fun and uh, find it interesting taking part and looking at uh, geographical patterns and mapping for your local area and thinking about risk mapping and uh, tectonic eruptions and uh, the implications of uh, volcanoes around the world and global uh, events like this. Okay, so that's an uh, overview of the input for the Ash Cloud Apocalypse uh, event. Uh, my name is Raphael Heath, Head of Geography at the Royal High School, Bath.